From the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., this is the Tyler's Place Podcast, a podcast all about Freemasonry by brothers for brothers, brought to you by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World. I'm your host, Maynard Edwards, 32nd Degree KCCH. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you'll check out our sister podcast, the Scottish Rite Journal Podcast. New episodes every single Wednesday, hosted by Brother Matt Bowers. If you want to get more into the Scottish Rite Journal, but sometimes you just run out of time in the day to read things, the Scottish Rite Journal podcast is for you. You can check it out wherever you listen to podcasts, and you're going to get some of that great Scottish Rite Journal content in an audio format. So you can listen in the car while you're mowing the lawn, standing in line at the grocery store, whatever. So make sure you check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, you've got to check out our YouTube channel. Tons and tons of great content there. Go to YouTube, search Scottish Right SJ, and you will find it. And I hope if you're a TikToker, you'll check out our brand new TikTok feed. In fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today. You can find our TikTok feed at Scottish Right SJ on TikTok. The feed itself is, is just over a month old. But we've already gotten some videos that have gone viral, and we've gotten over 5,000 followers, which is just a huge amount of growth in a very short period of time. And most of that is thanks to today's guest, Brother Jim Robinson, 32nd Degree, who's joining me. He's been helping create and grow the Scottish Rite TikTok feed with me, and and he's he's been an absolute godsend. So uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed on this. A couple months ago, I get a call from uh, Brother Ross Laver in Atlanta. He's the secretary there, a uh, dear friend of mine, and he says, Maynard, you, you got to talk to Brother Jim. He's doing these great things with TikTok. You need to get the whole Southern jurisdiction in on this. It, it's a really great way to talk about Scottish Rite Freemasonry and Freemasonry in general. Now, Ross is a grouchy old baby boomer, and I am a grouchy old Gen Xer. So, you know, neither one of us should really be dialed in on TikTok. It's kind of, you know, a generation below us, if you will. And, uh, but, you know, if Ross, the baby boomer, calls me and says, hey, you got to check this out, I know that I need to check this out. So I didn't know a lot about TikTok, but I give Jim a call, and I'm so, so glad I did because we have had so much fun working on the feed and creating content for TikTok. And, and Jim, you're, you're my TikTok guru 100%, but I, I want to start at the beginning and learn a little bit more about Jim Robinson as a Mason. So TikTok guru and Master Mason and Scottish Rite Freemason, Brother Jim Robinson, what, what brought you first to Freemasonry? I don't know if I'd go with guru, but, you know, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, no, I mean, so I... I started my Masonic journey uh, just a few years ago. Uh, I was actually watching a documentary. It was Inside the Freemasons. Uh, I had I've always been sort of curious about what exactly the the fraternity was and what it did, and then I I began to wonder does it even still exist? Because I don't recall ever meeting a Mason or actually having any sort of a conversation. So I got to a point where I was like, listen, there's there's they're doing a documentary. There's obviously there's got to be some activity out there. So let's let's dig around. I I found my local lodge, which was down the street. I nervously emailed them and said, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a little bit n- nervous. How do I how do I talk to y'all? I, I'd like to be able to at least figure out, you know, what what y'all stand for and, and everything. And I got a response back pretty quickly that said, come eat dinner with us. That was the first thing that I heard. And I thought, well, that's. Okay, that's pretty uh, forward, but sure, let's let's have dinner together. <laughs> and I didn't really know what that would even look like. So uh, fast forward a little bit, I uh, ended up showing up again, nervous guy, sweating. I didn't know what to think or do or, or how to how to feel. And I walked in, and immediately um, I was introduced to everybody, and I met with um, Brother Phil, who's the who's the, the man I actually interacted with first. And um, you know when you you know. Uh, the the vibe check, <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah, the I know exactly check, what you mean. <laughs> it it got checked almost immediately um, because as soon as I walked in, I sort of felt like, oh, this is what I was missing. Because and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be cliche or a, a marketing gizmo or anything. This I, I had a feeling and I couldn't I couldn't really explain it. So I got in. I you know everybody was asking me questions and. I was terrified to ask questions because I figured, well, 
I, I can't be, I, I can't look like a noob. I can't look like I'm uninformed. And, you know, uh, so I, I just sort of hung back and, 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 uh, chilled out a little bit. And then it, it just got more and more comfortable, the more dinners I would go to, because, you know, it was, uh, at this particular point, it was twice a month and I would go every, you know, every other Thursday. And it was, it was interesting. Cause I, you know, I was actually interacting with some of the guys there and, and we were just, you know, I, I, the one thing I noticed that nobody was talking about work, <laughs> nobody was really talking about, you know, necessarily the, the you know, uh, any of the political nonsense that was happening at any time. And, and it was like, well, this is interesting. I, I kind of figured I would be here. I'd be in a room with a bunch of guys complaining about everything under the sun. And we would be just, you know, uh, chewing fat about God knows what. And it wasn't, it was just, you know, like everybody was just excited about just talking about, you know, life. And I was like, is this real? <laughs> like, I don't understand this. It wasn't even the first time that I was there. And they, you know, I mean, after several times, it was they were talking this way, not really realizing that I was going to be maybe a future petitioner. I was just somebody there. Um, and they they didn't know who I was after a while because, you know, we'd get new guys coming in and and then I wouldn't necessarily go to everybody because, again, I was terrified of everyone, of everyone. And I wanted to, you know, kind of keep a, a low profile. Sure. And everybody just felt it was just very authentic. And that spoke a lot to me. Um, so fast forward, uh, the pandemic hit. <laughs> Yay. Um, and I was uh, I was attempting to put my petition in. They said, guess what? Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to close down. The Grandmaster has said, uh, we're not going to do any work. Um, therefore, we're going to have to put a pause on everything. Cool. All right. So. Fast forward along a little bit more, a few more months go by, and I finally get word that, oh, hey, guess what? Um, we're going to vote on your petition tonight. Okay. I don't know what that means, but sounds good. Uh, I got a message from one of the brothers that same night who said, um, I'm not supposed to say this, but uh, it was good. We're going we're gonna to bring you in. And I thought, oh, oh wow, this is, this is okay. So this you're is in, it. You're it's in, happening. You're in now. You're in the it's secret happening. door. <laughs> The, yes, exactly. The the knocking worked. Um, so I, you know, again, another, another few months went by. I, I was uh, initiated. And uh, I think after the initiation, I said, yep, everything was right. My vibe check was correct. It was dead on. I, this is where I had to be. And this is where, you know, that this is that pe missing piece of uh, the missing the missing puzzle piece in my life that I was missing. So I, um, I, you know, uh, was very happy to complete my my degrees. I, was passed and then um, it was raised. And I just, you know, I mean, Masons know that once, once you're sort of, um, it's, it's not like you're, oh, well, I'm in the club now. It's no, it's a completely different way of thinking and feeling and, and enjoying life again. And it just, I, I started treating my family better. I started talking to my friends differently. Like it, it was yeah, all you know what just, it is? I, I think what it is, and, and I, I'm doing the same thing you do all the time is like you try and articulate it or you try and uh, encapsulate it in a way that can be communicated. And really what it is, is that you end up hanging around people who have a positive attitude in a lot of cases, and then you carry that with you other places. And it just, it just, you know, it spreads it, you know, it, it, bad feelings spread, but good feelings spread too. And it, it's, it really, I think it's that simple. I was beaming with light. Yeah, I <laughs> Which mean, is, I know it's, you're right. I hate you hate. Don't you hate saying that cliche yeah, stuff? But that, that like, is there's yeah. no other way to say it. But it's true. I mean, it's yeah. you know, call it what you want. Um, call it call it just positivity. <laughs> Let's sure. call it that. Uh, so that was that was kind of what got me launched into this. Um, and it wasn't really that that long after I I had already been researching the Scottish Rite actually, and I realized that this felt very much to me and some of the Scottish Rite brothers that I was talking to like sort of a like a university almost. It was sort of like, okay, you're a master mason and that's as high as you go, which is awesome. But then there's these these additional classes off to the side that you're welcome to to join in and, and learn some more. And I thought, okay, I'm I I'm looking for anything I can get because I, I just enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed the lessons. I enjoyed um what was happening and I wanted to meet more of the brothers. Um holy crap, lo and behold, I did a, a ton more. And that was that was really exciting for me, you know. Um, I was I was brought in, and I I was at the uh, the the first reunion after my my raising. I didn't. I know you you hear a lot of a lot of uh, brothers who will say, "Well, give it some time, you know, settle in, find your place." And I said, "Listen, I love my Blue Lodge, but I'm also hungry for knowledge." 
and I want to go for more. So this is my journey and it's everybody's journey. So, yeah, I think everybody has to do that. There, there's some people who definitely need that, that break, just like there are some students who need a gap year after high school, you know, listen, lear learning three catechisms is not a simple task. No, <laughs> it's no, a little it's not, taxing. It, it's, 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 you're not learning just the catechism though. You're no. learning a whole new language. Mason speak infects who you are. I mean, right. you know, we use word like if someone is a Mason, sometimes they'll give it away just by a particular turn of phrase without you actually say they'll, you know, no one says wheresoever dispersed, or, yeah. you know, <laughs> no, no one says whence came you, you know, those, right. those are uniquely Masonic statements, but you'll hear people drop little phrases like that. In a, in like, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now in your, in your career, uh, I know you and I have some similarities is that uh, both came from broadcast media. So um, yes, sir. Tell me a little Hi, bit, tell, yeah, right. <laughs> you guys can't see him right now. He's practically putting one finger over here, like the Johnny <laughs> fever and WKRP. That's right. So, so tell me about that part uh, of, of Jim, uh, brother, Jim Robinson, uh, the, uh, the on-air professional, the uh, production professional, so oh, on lord well believe it or not i was i actually got into broadcast when i was 17. So that uh, was when i started I was, I was still in high school yep. i uh, i was getting ready to get out and i had a i had an anchor come by our, our high school actually and he said hey you know uh this is what broadcast looks like we had a local abc station up the road and he said uh, if anybody ever wants to come by and just kind of see what we do and take a tour yay come on by well that uh that week i went in i said how do i become an intern I, I would love to come and just do this and practice and, and do, you know, figure out what the heck you guys are up to. And uh, he he kind of guided me along this whole weird, unique, I didn't think this was even possible kind of a journey into broadcast as a 17 year old kid who's, you know, has never t picked up a television camera or a microphone, really had no idea how to tell a story, just sort of I don't know, figured it out. But at the same time, I was you know, I'm sort of absorbing all of the elements of what makes a broadcast. So like how to mix audio, how to play tape. Yeah, I said tape um, and how to, you know, uh, put together a piece and write, write a story and how to talk to people when you're out in the public as someone who's a fact finder, a journalist. Um, and it was just one of those things I, I began to fall in love with pretty early. And then as I started learning about broadcast, television, I started to learn more about radio. And I said, Oh, my gosh, radio is great, too. Holy, holy crap. Uh, so I, I actually started uh, working part time made barely, barely peanuts uh, at a small station It was about a 50,000 watt FM station. It was Christian rock. Um, but man, did we we send we send music far and wide on that transmitter. It was a, it was pretty fun. I didn't realize how far I was going, uh, you know, as a, as a 17, 18 year old kid on those airwaves. But then I, I, I was actually heard from someone, uh, there was a, a an, an FM station across the street. It was a classic rock station who had heard me just on the radio one day and, and was like, Hey, I bet you this guy, I wonder if he'd come and do some part-time stuff for us. He got in touch with me. I started doing some classic rock and I, you know, I was like, whoa, this, this is kind of crazy. I'm like, now I'm kind of in, I'm in television and now I'm kind of in radio. And it's like, whoo, all right, this is a, this is, this is a whirlwind. This is kind of fun. Um, so, you know, I, I progressed along and then I, I began to do on camera work for that TV station. Uh, the funny thing was I didn't really think I wanted to, nor did I think I, ever, you know, ever wanted to or ever could do something like that. But it turned out that we were in a place where, I mean, it's a small station. The DMA was like, you know, 179, which as you know, is, right. you know, it's, it's pretty small. Sure. Um, we actually had a, a, a for, shortage. For folks who don't know what that is, that's basically the market size. It's, it's Demo Yeah, your demographic yeah, size. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, it, it you know, radio stations, TV stations, they kind of look at things in terms of market, meaning their traditional reach when the, the signal came out of the antenna, how far did it go? And so you can think of cities like the Baltimore market, the Washington market, Atlanta, and, and there are small markets as well all over the country where like small radio stations and TV stations serve, Every, you know, cable and satellite, everything. Is, and the internet, of course, has, has uh, blurred a lot of those lines. But so uh, when he says, D I, I'm sorry, I had to translate, had to translate radio speak for <laughs> everybody okay. else out there. <laughs> so we just assume that everybody knows what a DMA yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and what 179 is. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Uh, it means small. Like uh, New, York small. Is, <laughs> New York and LA are one and two. Right. They kind of flop back and forth every once in a while. And then, you know, you can do the math from there. So that's right. When you're in a, when you're a, a, a demographic that small, you go to the grocery store after being on TV twice. So like, 
are you Jim? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, okay. You're it's everybody's weird. friend. Yeah. Everybody's friend. Everybody wants to know that guy. Uh, so I, um, you know, I, I started doing some on-camera work because we had a shortage of reporters. And on top of that, I was starting to get relatively good with using a camera. So they said, well, if you can shoot video, could you actually do some stuff on camera too? That would actually kill two birds with one stone and may actually do some good storytelling. And I said, I can try it. I mean, it's a big camera, I think it's 60 pounds and I'm, you know, I'm a kid. I, I, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll figure this out. Uh, so I started getting some practice doing that. And eventually I got, you know, I got enough experience and kind of built up my confidence. And I got a job in Toledo, Ohio at the Fox station there. Um, where they were building a that's brand a pretty new good size market. That's, well, that's decent. top 100, isn't it? It's decent. I, I went there as a photographer because I was not super sure that my on air skills would do anything other than, you know, maybe work in a 179. And I thought, I'm going to go there as a photographer. I'm really going to hone that craft and, and see how I do. Um, so I, I went there as a photographer and then I got homesick. I'm really homesick. Um, I think I was there for maybe, you know, eight months and I said, I got to get out of here. I just, I'm, I'm t it's not that I was I was too young and, and afraid. I think I just didn't know what the heck I was doing, and I I felt just alone. Um, so I, I went back and I said, I, I'm going to try this on air thing again. I'm going to work for uh, another station. It's sort of in the same first market where I had already had some name recognition. And I can't believe I just said that out loud. It's so embarrassing to say that that you have um, name recognition. Yeah, right. like hey, well, everybody, I mean, we're having a conversation. You, you're you're not walking into a TJI Fridays and going, don't you know who I am? I'm, right, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> God, I would never there's, do that. There's a difference. That's awful. <laughs> so I would, you know, I went back and I was a on a reporter for a, a bureau, and I would just same thing, tell stories, kind of, you know, I'd I'd have one big story a day, and I would do a live shot. Um, and so I, you know, I, I did that. I met my future wife there, who uh, who actually didn't know who I was, which is great. Had no idea that I was on TV or, or that I was in broadcast, but. Um, we we met through some mutual friends who eventually told her, you know, that guy's like the reporter for the Channel 6 station, right? And she's like, okay, I don't watch the news. I don't care. And so I was like, I like you <laughs> because you didn't, you know, you had no ulterior motives to, to you know, um, to, to come for me and my, you know, $11 a year uh, paycheck. <laughs> you know, yeah, there, there's the misnomer. People hear you on the radio, see you on TV and they're like, oh, he's he's wealthy. No. Yeah, no, no I've, so nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of radio and TV folks. The minute they leave the uh, the studio, they're outside with a cardboard sign. That's right, <laughs> but, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, just you know, like taking the coupons from you know that that morning's live remote and trying to get a hot dog from Seven Eleven. Yep, uh, you know, <laughs> been there, done that, brother. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Stacks of those Seven Eleven free food. Oh my God, those those got me through a lot of bad a lot of bad months. Uh, so, you know, I, I, again, fast forward, I, I, I went through some different markets and I, I, I always kept doing radio at all these markets because I'm a glutton for punishment and I wanted to work all day long. <laughs> so I would do a couple of morning shifts. I, I was in Fort Myers, Florida, um, at one point working for the country radio station. I was, a I was, a uh, I was like the morning crazy jock guy who'd mm -hmm. go out and do funny remotes and, uh, you know, I was the guy who was hopped up on coffee. I was Java Jim. Um, and so we, you know, we had a, we had a thing with a couple of the gas stations who would, you know, throw free caffeine my way. And I, um, I don't think I slept for, you know, uh, weeks at a time because I was, you know, just completely hopped up on caffeine. Um, but it was fun. You know, I, it was, it gave me the opportunity to, to meet with people, which that's, that's always been my, my love really is every time I got out with a camera or I got out with a microphone, I, I always like to just interact with people. And I, it's strange to say that too, because I'm also sort of introverted. If you know what I mean, it's sort of like, yeah. a, like an extroverted introvert. Well, it's a, it's a different, it's a different thing when the, when the mic comes on, you're, you're, you're not just you anymore. You're, you're right. someone who's present. And I, I think of that style of broadcasting those, those live radio shows out in the field, out at a diner, out at a, a you know, the, the, the quick lube place where whatever it is. You're putting on a show. Yeah, that you're putting on a show, but that's really broadcasting without a net. I mean, because yeah. <laughs> you're on, you got thousands of people listening. That's right. You have very little control over your environment. You know, in the studio, there's a, a high degree of control, no matter yes. how crazy it might seem. But I can dump out whenever I want. Yeah, but you really learn how to do the job out on those types of things, I think, because you you learn uh, how to contend with just about everything that goes on. So that, that, I mean, that certainly is a feather in your cap, proverbially speaking, because, uh, that, that certainly can lead you to other things. If you have that, that, that gift of gab out there in, in front of people. 
Yeah. And it, you know, it was one of those things where I, uh, it, it was, you know, I was, I think, I think you get a little bit of an ego too, because people want to come say hi to you because you're, you, they think you're cool. And yeah, you know, and it, it, listen, I mean, at the same time, I think this is sort of, uh, I don't want to speak for all on air or on camera or on mic personalities, but you know, sometimes it's a, it's a little lonely, you know, we do, we do, uh, you know, I, depression is very big uh, yeah. with broadcasters too, because it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a different field. You, you spend a lot of time alone in a studio with just you and a mic and some music. Yeah. I always, it, I see you're, it's so funny. You mentioned that I say to people all the time, I, I know a lot of radio and television people who are a little bit mentally ill from the, the job because yeah. you spend long periods of time in a room talking to people who aren't there. <laughs> That's right. So, I've I also, mean, I've also gotten really comfortable with just talking to myself in front of groups of people. Cause you know, I used to have to rehearse. I had to think yeah. like, what am I going to say for this live shot? And I was like, okay, now John over here and people are looking at me like I'm, like I'm insane. And I said, listen, you, there's really nothing you can do at this point. I know that I'm, I look crazy, but I, I have to practice. Otherwise I'm going to, you know, look like a fool. And yeah. You ever do the one where you get like some really bad news, 10 seconds before you have to open the phone. <laughs> you ever had that happen? Yeah. Oh God. I hate that. Like I, I was in, no, I was in a room with like another jock and a, an intern and myself and I'm, I'm on air and the other guy's waiting to come in in like 15 minutes. So he's prepping his show. And then the intern is there. I don't know what the heck he was doing, but like, and then I get a phone call from my dad telling me, you know, my brother who was, who was uh, sick with cancer at the time and that, you know, he was, he was not going to make it. They were sending him home. And so I get this call that like, you know, eminent death is coming yeah. in my family. And then like, I mean, I get the call, I hang up and I, I hit, I hit the mic button. I was like, all right, that was guns and roses. Thanks for being here today. And uh, it's going to be sunny in 75 and, and uh, here's BTO. Yeah. And, and then close the mic and then break down into tears. Right. And like, and I remember like looking at the intern whose mouth was like, what the heck just happened? How did you switch it? between, you know, completely depressed yeah, and messed yeah. up to hi everybody. How's everyone right. doing? Well, because, Hope your you Thursday's know, going well. Yeah, because you, you got to do it because the audience doesn't yeah. care whether you have a headache or whether, yeah. you know, something terrible. They just they're there to be entertained. But and you know, what's really funny about that, too. Not not funny about your situation or breaking news like that. But I, I've also learned that, you know, because especially with with radio, I was always taught to smile. Oh, yes. In the you mic. Hear a smile. Absolutely. Hear a smile. So that's the same, it's sort of the same way when you when you're talking about like you put on a hey, I'm, a, I'm putting on a present presentation. Yeah. It goes right through the mic and into the ears and into the mind. And you begin to do this. You know, the theater of the mind is you Absolutely. having a good time. And it's only because, you know, you do little things like you smile and you just look like you're happy. And it it's just it's amazing how that works, really. And it absolutely. In fact, when um, uh, our sister podcast, the Scottish Right Journal podcast, my uh, my uh, associate producer, Matt Bowers, he he had never really voiced a whole lot before. And I said, well, give it a shot. You got a good voice. And I was listening to him and I said, you got to smile when you talk because you can hear it. And he, he, did, he thought that was stupid. And I was like, you can tell what he's like. Oh, God, I didn't realize. And it's so funny you say that. But so, like the first thing you have to do is make a big smile and yeah. then talk. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Well, I, I could, you and I could radio nerd out. And oh, I know we could, we could all day, all day. So TikTok, let's do TikTok. Yeah, let's, let's start a Masonic <laughs> TikTok. So, yes. um, I'll bring everybody up to speed. So our YouTube channel, which you can check out at YouTube, obviously, uh, Scottish right. SJ is our handle there. And in summer of 2021, we got contacted by the folks at NBC about helping out with their show, The Lost Symbol, and doing sort of a behind the scenes look at some of the symbols and things that they used in Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol uh, television show that they were working on. Uh, they had originally planned on coming here to the building to do some of that work. And they couldn't because of COVID, you know, travel was restricted and so on. So they're like, why don't you guys do this? So they gave us permission to use some of their things. And I start doing this, this YouTube channel and it just, it really did blow up. And it was shortly thereafter that I started hearing uh, Brother Jim's name uh, again from uh, Ross Laver in, in Atlanta. Sorry about uh, that. How did you put together the idea of, of bringing TikTok and uh, masonry together. You had some TikTok experience prior to, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'll back up a hair. I mean, it's it, back. I, I want to say right around the end of 2019, I had I had just kind of stumbled into TikTok, and I was like, uh, I was at work. I just had finished up. To, uh, uh, we were we were doing a shoot in our studio, and I I had start playing around with this, and I I missed Vine. Do you remember Vine? Yes. The five second clips or the six second clips. Yep. I was addicted to it because it was just dumb things or silly things or comedic things to make me a little bit, you know, less nuts during the day. 
and it was just it, it was addicting. I missed it. And I said, I, I, I stumble upon TikTok and I was like, wait, this seems similar. So I start flipping through. And I'm like, oh, this is silly. I, I can't do this. Uh, 15, 20 minutes later, go later, uh, 15 or 20 minutes go by. And I realize I've just burned a bunch of time getting, you know, looking at this app. And I said, now that's interesting. Here I am. I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm in the the broadcast industry and, and more especially, more especially digital. Um, and so I, I had. See, he uh, just I, caught it. You didn't see this. I saw the look on his face and we're zooming. So uh, Jim just realized he spent, he, he said some stuff that comes from a sonic ritual more especially. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, just, no, no worries. Every, bro. Everything. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, it, it always leaks out somewhere. Um, yep. So, uh, you know, I was at the time I was working for um, for a, a weather entity and we were talking about ways to uh, get more of a, a branding effort to get, you know, younger folks thinking about our brand and, and how we can get, um, you know, get people back on into our app and our and our product and our, you know, our website. So I, I, I went ahead and I, I reserved a handle um, on TikTok and um, it actually started getting a little bit of views and things like that. And I said, OK, this is cool. So now I'm kind of managing, you know, like this this random TikTok handle for our company. And then I'm still doing my nonsense on the side and, you know, dog pic, dog videos and whatever I decided to do for that. Um, then I then as soon as I. Uh, started really diving into my the personal side of my TikTok channel. I said, you know, this is this is you know, I started TikTok when I was a non Mason, and you can tell. There's literally, if you look at my feed, you can tell when I became a Mason. <laughs> it's it's hilarious because it's like, you know, random stuff, random stuff, random stuff, and then oh, masonry. Like I put up like a, I think I put a, a you know, um, one of the one of the the PSAs for the Scottish Rite and. And then I saw that blow up and I said, now, hold on a second. That's interesting. Wait, so wait, there are Masons on TikTok? Then no, this can't be right. It's got to be a small audience. It's, this has got to be a fluke. You know, it's it just, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, I kept, I kept putting things up and kept putting things up and I kept seeing more views coming in. I said, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. Well, at the same time, I was also working on my brand account for, for work and I, we, we finally got all the, the legal approvals and everything like that. And we switched it over and we really started producing content for that. So here I was doing it professionally and personally, sort of side by side, playing with the algorithm, seeing what was working, what wasn't, and, and what was actually um, clicking with hashtags and sounds and, you know, the, the, uh, the different trends. And it was just amazing to see from, from my personal side, I was looking and seeing that this community was sort of building. And I didn't realize it until all of a sudden I had one video um, where I was installed as the senior deacon for my lodge. Um, and I don't think there was anything much on it or in it that was interesting. I, I really didn't think it was interesting at all. I was like, yeah, I'm going to put it up because I have, you know, I want to put something up on, on TikTok. My daughter, who's nine, took the video. She was an open installation and she, she recorded dad going up to the altar and, you know, being presented. I think it was about eight seconds or something like that. Um, so that video went viral. I had two million views on it. Um, and I was like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> What's happening here? Uh, okay. And then I started looking at the comments and realizing that there were a ton of people who were either trolls. You got lots of those. It's the internet. Ain't going anywhere. Or you had... You had people who were just saying, my dad was a Mason. This is really cool. I never got to experience this with him. I never got to sit in, in, do a, in, a, in a public installation because he never talked about it. Or he, you know, whenever I brought it up, it was sort of like, well, you know, change the subject. This is really fascinating because I have never actually seen this happen. And again, I, it was flipping through comments and flipping through comments. And it was like, oh, this is cool. How do I become one? And then I thought, Wait a second. So we're there are actually, you know, and I think last time I looked, there were what a billion active monthly users. Okay, now I get it, and I started to think about this as a as a much larger audience of people who were either interested in Freemasonry, 
knew someone who was a Freemason and still found it a little bit interesting. Um, or, you know, people who were just interested in esoteric or in, in just fraternities in general. And I thought, okay, well, this, this is fun. Um, and so as I, as I was learning about this and, and sort of tying it in with some of my experience from, from, um, my company account, it all began to come together as, okay, well, there's an algorithm based in here that is searching for things that you might like. Um, and based on what I was clicking on and liking, I started getting into the Masonic talk, <laughs> which is, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, it's a funny thing when you, when you are a TikTok user, you find like your, your interest and you add right. talk to it. I mean, it's more or less like you like, if you like broadcast, you'll know, be in broadcast talk. It's, but I, I found Masonic talk and I thought that was, that, that was really cool. Um, and it, there were just so many out there who were, who were finally putting things out and, and we were answering questions and we were talking to each other and it felt like, okay, well, I already knew I was part of a global fraternity, but now it feels like I am because here I am someone in Georgia, not really knowing, you know, a ton of brothers here. I know some, but suddenly I had, I had friends and brothers in North Carolina, in Scotland, in Maryland, in California. And I was like, okay, now I, now I really see this value in having this community online and, and on this, on this particular app, because here we are, we, we just didn't have an outlet. It felt like we didn't have a place to like interact with each other and actually have like meaningful conversations with, you know, I don't want to say, you know, I guess it is, you know, like they're strangers, but we're all kind of, you know, going for the same cause. And I, I just, I found that fascinating. And so, um, we, we just kept moving forward. I kept, I kept trying to figure out, you know, what things are, are, are clicking the most. And, and, and we started looking at, well, what's interesting. I, I mean, is, is it interesting? We eat a lot of green beans at, at lodge night. Sure. Is it inter Is it really interesting that, um, a past grand commander is, is interned at the museum at the house of the temple? No, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Two actually. <laughs> Two. Mason or not, that's where it was sort of like, okay, now we're not only are we getting people in with just interesting things, we're getting people in who are lovers of knowledge and history and and also Freemasons. So I mean it that has really been sort of like this journey of of discovery. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there actually is a discovery thing on on TikTok that is not a a forced thing, well, but let's talk a little bit about um, there. There are critics, both Masonic and non Masonic. The non Masonic ones, they, they tend to be the trolls, and we can talk about that uh, first. But first, let's talk about the Masonic critics who say, Oh, we shouldn't be doing this. You know, I got when we first announced the channel, we were at one of our Scottish Right Right Way conferences in, in, um, in the spring here, and I got, uh, oh, you know, the, that's how the Chinese government's stealing our souls. And, and I mean, just ridiculous <laughs> right. things. Um, what's the, what's the benefit to the fraternity, uh, really? And then, you know, is there necessarily a downside? I, 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 we, we hear a lot of the negative things that social media brings into our lives, but as you just pointed out, you know, it's opened up this network of people globally who have had the same experiences that, that you have had, that I have had, you know, the, 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 the reason people uh, subscribe to being fans of a baseball team or they wear their college shirt is that they want to advertise to the world. Hey, this is, this is one of the, the tribes that I'm in. This is one of the groups that I'm a part of. This is a, a shared experience that I have with others so that they can connect with other people. Yeah. And, and, and TikTok is and Facebook and all the social media platforms really are, are doing that. So when, when you look at the, the good, bad balance there, what do you, what do you see uh, as a Mason and as a broadcast professional? Look, I get it. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where we, we're very cognizant of our obligation. We're very cognizant of the things that we really shouldn't be talking about, be, not because they are detrimental to the craft or anything. It's just because out of context, they don't make sense and they could cause different feelings and could, you know, impact the way that we're seen. And I, I certainly understand that. And I think a lot of the brothers who, who I've interacted with, or I've just seen are very aware of that. And, 
when you're talking about a lot of the the brothers who are who are saying it's a bad idea we're we're we're, we're minimalizing all of the things that we do that we don't need to share that you know what we have is special I can see it from both sides. I can see that, yes, we do have a sp something special. I'm glad that not everybody is a Mason, although sometimes I wish everybody was because the world would be a better place. But I also, I also love the fact that we do have, we do share something that is, that is uniquely special, like you said. At the same time, we're, uh, last time I checked, they haven't cured aging. So we are all going to age out and eventually die, right? What happens after us? How are we supposed to how are we supposed to share what we love about the craft that has made us better men when we can't do it on on a regular basis with with a lot of different points of view and a, a lot of people who just don't get the opportunity to ask those questions from someone that they may or may not know that is what I'm worried about I'm worried about the future because while freemasonry is not going to disappear from the face of the earth in the next 10 years, 100 years, even maybe. God, I hope not. It's be, the, the reason it has lived this long is because we have, we have endured because we love it. And when we are actively trying to talk about it, that ultimately is going to be the, the thing that's going to keep pushing it forward. Now, I get it. Again, the, the internet is very public. It, it is an ugly place. You know this. It is an ugly place. It is. And it's not because there are ugly people out there. It's because it is such a, it is such a tool to get out ugliness and, and negativity when you're having a bad day. When you yourself are in a, in a place in your life at this moment where you want to, you want to bring down everyone around you so that it equalizes the way that, the, the, the way that you feel. And to be honest with you, a lot of the Masons who I talk to and interact with in the community, we we respond to trolls with love. We do. I mean, it, it's believe me, it's tough. It is very tough, and it takes a it, it takes a lot out of you to consistently dump out the regurgitated Google myths and and nonsense. But at the same time, I also realize that people are people. Everybody is genuinely wants to be happy and wants to be, you know, um, they want to have a good experience in life. But at the same time, you, we also realize that it's just not always going to happen and that's okay. And so it's really, it's really up to us to carry the good, the good things that we do in a way that is, it, it is public, it, you know, and, and, and is, is public as it can be, whatever's, you know, proper to be said. Um, I just, I don't know if you're ever going to have a, you know, this sort of like this big aha moment where suddenly you're going to have a lot of Masons who are just anti-social media or anti-internet and the ones who are like us who say, no, actually, this is a good thing with restraints and with guidelines and, and, and we can do this. We can make this something that is shared on a much larger scale, um, but I think all we're going to do is we're going to hopefully get that divide a little fuzzier and a little fuzzier so that eventually we get to a place where um, we're still able to, to show what we love and share what we love without a lot of the hostility. And I, I know it's a really long answer. I just, I, I don't, these are my experiences and I'm just only speaking for myself. I don't speak for the craft or, or any, or any grand lodge, but you know, that's just, we have, we have a duty. <laughs> to keep this, to keep what we love alive. So, well, yeah. And I mean, Masons are, are part of the world. They are part of the, and whether we like it or not, you know, as we sit 2022 social media, including TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, you name all of them. I don't know if is Twitter still Twitter. Did Elon change it already? <laughs> I don't no, know if he's changed it to, to, I think it's, I think it's check just cleared. So we'll yeah, see. but, um, you know, it is a part of the world and we can't extract ourselves from it. And more to the point is I, I'm a, I'm the worshipful master this year. And, uh, one thing I say to people at lodges all the time is, listen, I get it. You can't come to every meeting and that's okay. But masonry is about more than the meetings. Masonry is how you live your life and the values you choose to ascribe to when you're abroad in the world, as we say. And if you're living those values and you happen to be doing it on social media, 
so what? It's you're still living your life as a good Mason. And I, and I think that that's, that's worth setting an example. It's worth preserving, as you mentioned. So I, I think, you know, I, I, I agree with you, but I think there's another step beyond that. I think that it's, it's, this is part of the world. And, and as Masons, we're, we're obligated to be a part of it. And, and, and I, you know, I know every Grand Lodge has slightly different ritual, but in, in, in Maryland, and I know others that follow a particular ritual, Masons in every climb are to be found. Well, Social media is a climb. So there it is. There we are. And I have to say the way this works, just to let everybody in on it is, is uh, Jim set the whole thing up and uh, uh, I take credit for it. No, um, <laughs> the, uh, Jim said it's it up a team, Mason, brother. It's a team. It, what, what we do is I, I kind of go around the temple here, take pictures of interesting things, narrate whatever, and then send it to him. And then he, he goes through TikTok, and then we both kind of manage the comments. You're much better at ignoring the trolls than I am <laughs> every once in a while. I do my real level best but there's a part of me that i'm still a rough ashler brother and i'm still (laughs) at my heart at my heart i'm an old school radio dj and when somebody calls to zing me i'm zinging them back and i gotta talk myself (laughs) off of that ledge so often like well you know what you do is just say that oh no he didn't and then i'm I like the band hammer. I just like to block people. It's fun. It, it, it's like a little, like a little power trip. I'm like, ah, you're gone. Be gone. Be gone. I try really hard. I try, I try and do what you mentioned. I try and approach with a little bit of love. So yeah. if somebody Film comes at you, how come you've only got the three books? And it's like, well, because it's a small altar. <laughs> well, well, get a bigger <laughs> altar. Okay. Well, get a bigger room. Get a big, you yeah. know, it's like, what, it, what, where do we stop with this? Yes. And, and like, and then somebody wrote, you know, there are many, many more books. Yeah. The library is 10 feet that way, but you just can't <laughs> see. Right. Okay? It's, it's only, it's only a 15 second video. Chill. Um, <laughs> but, and, and like you said, there's a certain amount of unreasonableness in there, but, but what's yeah. fascinating are the number of brothers and the amount of interest from people just, wow, I didn't know that about Masons or that's really cool. Or, or, you know, just those, those positive comments, they, they, they really do. Um, it doesn't mean a lot when people comment and say, Hey, this is great. Thanks for doing it. Well, I just on just Saturday, a uh, couple of days ago when we were at this degree in why not, which is near uh, Dallas, Georgia. Um, you know, I, I had a couple of people walk up to me and I, I was starting to get those, those old broadcastery days where people would walk up, Jim, Jim over here. I'm like, Oh God, what'd I do? Hey, just want to let you know that the TikTok channel is has changed the way that um, brothers at the lodge approach social media and have have brought a, a whole new sense of it's okay to talk, it's okay to be doing what we're doing. And I'll be honest with you that that right there made my entire year. Just hearing that, even these little steps, whether it be you know, uh, we because I I also run the our, our Grand Lodge TikTok channel. Our grandmaster this year, uh, Donald Combs, is is insanely amazing, and he he he's challenging the future. We're doing that. We're we're living up to his up to his um, challenge for the, for all of us as Masons. Um, and be, it, it's just one of those things. It just it just it makes me feel good knowing that the little things that you and I are doing, Brother Maynard, is actually impacting you know the craft and the way that people and maybe changing minds just a little tiny bit, even if it's. You know, it's still uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, at least we're doing something to to try to help. And, you know, and what they say, you know, I, I, I wanted to comment on what something you said, you know, masonry happens between the meetings. And that's that's what really we have to keep trying to do and keep showing people like, you know, and I, I actually had someone this is completely unrelated to everything, but I had someone tell me, well. You know, what's so what's so great about being a mason? Why do you? You know, if if it was so great, why you know why aren't all people masons? And I or, or why don't you let everybody be masons? And I said, well, let me just first tell you that Freemasonry. If if everybody was a Freemason, we would have so much less crap and so much less hate. And that. you know, I mean, the we are we are told and we are taught to use the tools of Freemasonry to make better you know, uh, to make a better world by just being better people and to share that. And I, I, you know, I mean, if, if it means that the megaphone that we share that, that information with, or that, that, you know, um, whatever you want to call it is through a, a TikTok account or a YouTube channel or a, a tweet. So be it. I just think we need to get over ourselves a little bit with social media and the internet, you know, it's not going anywhere. Phones aren't going anywhere. They're only going to get smarter. Pretty soon I'm going to have a phone in my, and I'm going to have a chip in my head. So are you. And we're going to just, you know, 
think of think of tweets and they'll just show up um but that's you know i that's i'm with you i i feel like we've we've got to we've got to keep it going well and i and i think too that the and i, the, and I know i gotta let you go I've been, i could chat with you all day it's fun to, fun to chat with someone who has so many shared experiences but one of the things that we, you know looking back over the covid uh period in our lives here we recognize how important technology has become to all of us and and the need to but at the same time we also realize the poison of it that we we need to find that balance point between being together in person and interacting in that virtual world that that kind of can move us forward in the future to a place of of you know of peace of happiness of of those things where we have a virtual life that we can enjoy and be proud of and we have a a, a real world life that we can uh, be proud of and enjoy and those things kind of cross over as needed and it, it's I have to tell you I've really enjoyed working with you on this I cannot thank you enough I know Grand Commander Cole I can't wait till you can be here and meet him in person he's really excited to talk to you he's he's he loves doing a TikTok and then checking every few minutes to see how many. Oh, I got a hundred views. I got two eighty thousand views. Can I tell you that the the video? If you go to our TikTok account, which is um, at Scottish Right SJ, we have a video pinned in there right now, and it's literally the Grand Commander just saying, "Hey, thanks for thanks for being here. This is our TikTok channel. We're real. <laughs> this is like the official account. It has eighty two thousand views. He loves that." He loves it's, it. It's him saying, hey, hey, how you doing? Yeah. And it's great because the comments are like, oh, I love this guy. He came and spoke to us. I I, I admire his, you know, and it, that's cool. You know, I just think I just think that's so, you know, how much what, more what love can, me, I, can you get a guy? What kills me are the people who who are still willing to argue about the dumb thing about the rings. It's the most watched <laughs> YouTube video we've got. Like, which way should you wear your ring? I don't, like, guys, it does not matter. Just throw it in the air, catch it, put it on, and and yep. do whatever. We got eleven thousand views on that one that you posted. Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. So well, and we've we've got a lot of fun stuff that we're yep. we're looking forward to, both Jim and myself. And uh, I, I like I said, brother, I can't thank you enough. Uh, the craft is in your debt for uh for bringing this to us because, uh, it, you know, I I caught myself being grumpy about it when Ross first told me. I was like, Ugh, TikTok, like one more thing to do. <laughs> like one, not because I was like so opposed to it right. from a moral standpoint, but I was like, like oh. No, Another platform we got to like, figure out, right? Another thing to learn how to do. Right. But you've you've made it very enjoyable, and and the best part about it is getting to know you and uh, get to be uh, you know develop this uh, friendship and brotherhood uh, Thanks, brother. through these many miles. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope people will uh, tune into our TikTok, which is at Scottish Right SJ, and your TikTok, you the Gym Project, the underscore Gym underscore Project, because you know I'm I'm one continuous project I haven't quite figured out yet, but I'm working on it. So. Aren't we all? There you friend. go. I'm the rough all, ashlar. All rough ashlers. That's right. So, <laughs> Brother Jim Robinson from the Valley of Atlanta. Thanks for joining us here on the Tyler's Place podcast. I really hope to get you here in person soon so I can shake your hand in person. And uh, thanks so much, man. My pleasure. Good to see you. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Tyler's Place podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks especially to my guest, Brother Jim Robinson, 32nd degree from the Valley of Atlanta for being on the show today and for also all the great work he's doing with our TikTok feed. If you've got a question, a comment, an idea for the Tyler's Place podcast, just drop me an email, podcast at scottishright.org. And make sure you check out our YouTube feed and all the other podcasts we offer. Also, check out our homepage, scottishright.org. And if you're not a master mason and you're interested in learning more about Freemasonry, we've got one great site put together to help you connect with a lodge in your area. Go to beafreemason.com and that will help you get connected to a lodge in your area so you can begin your journey to self-improvement and more light in your life through Freemasonry. So make sure you check that out, beafreemason.com. I'm your host here at the Tyler's Place, Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree, KCCH, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tyler's Place.